I'm talking to believers now because I'm believers, you know, I don't have any right to talk to you. You are a free agent of your beliefs. Your creator created you that way. So what creator? That's not a question for me. That's your question. You have to answer that question. And when you hear people talk about a creator and they speak of the security of knowing a creator, it's not their responsibility to appease that insecurity in you or that unbelief in you. If you're secure in your unbelief, have at it. But it's no one's responsibility to prove anything to you. God did not make you that way. It's not your responsibility to prove anything to anyone. Listen, you guys, I'm a minister of the gospel. I've ministered the gospel for years. But one thing that I had to learn, I'm 57, as they say, in years now. I started ministering the gospel actually when I was around 19, 20 years old. And here's one thing that I have learned. You're not here to prove anything to anyone. People live and die never accepting truth. People are actually the products, the victims or the beneficiaries, whichever side you take, of their own truth, their own belief. So by the time you're in a situation with someone where you're trying to convince them that there is a God, you are actually out of your league because the only one that can convince anyone of anything is the spirit of the one that made them. And in agreement with that spirit, they take the authority. God has never made, God has not made any puppets or any robots. People are free agents of their own thoughts. Not even the devil himself can take priority or preeminence over your thoughts. You are the beneficiary of your own thoughts. You are the victim of your own thoughts. Whatever uh, extreme you choose to uh, let your mindset, your worldview be governed by. Now watch this. When you cannot substantiate something by what you see, listen to me now. When you cannot substantiate something by what you see, the worst thing you can do is run to someone who has proven it by what they've seen and then let them show you. Seeing is believing. Please, believing is believing. And nothing else. See, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. And see, you sound crazy to uh, the average person. Some of you, watch this. Some of you, your heart is not right. And I'm, again, I'm talking to believers and Christians, my brothers. My brothers, all mankind are my brothers, but there is a level of spirituality and enlightenment that makes people your opposition or they are outside of the covenant of their creator by their decision. God doesn't disinclude anyone. But some of you, you are not really uh, loving and uh, kind and simple enough because there is still in you a fear of looking crazy to people who, according to the Bible, are crazy. This is in my statement. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now, let me ask you a question. And I don't care what you say. This Bible was written thousands of years ago. You can say what you want. Why? Would there be written an admonition, a warning, a proclamation about what a person is that says God doesn't exist? 
Why would that be written thousands of years ago? And then why would, after that is written, you got a whole gang of people saying it? There is no God. Why? Why? Just a little thought for you, believer. You have to rest in your personal understanding and your personal faith. That's the only thing that's going to move anyone. That's why I tell you, you know, running to science, you know, running to books, it's okay to read books. But do you know that the surest foundation for faith is, number one, what's inside of you, and then preeminent above number one, God knows you. According to the scripture, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them who are his. You got people that are probably going to only live and die about 70, 80, 90 years, you know, maybe not that long. Sitting around discussing the validity of a power that has to do with everything concerning why they're even here. Have no clue as to what goes on on the other side. Totally ignorant of spiritual things. And the only thing they can present in front of you is what they see. I'm telling you, there needs to be such a strong, persuasive onslaught of confidence and belief in the spiritual and that that is not seen that these people who are stuck in what they see that changes before them every day the things you see change all the time heard had one person bless his heart uh, my middle name is Patrick I think this person's name is Patrick's name you know what's up man had one person say that scientists are, are discovering that nothing is final, there is anything final. Listen, the only thing that is not final is death. Let me tell you what is final. There is a creator who has decided that your final, your final destination is love and reward. He's decided that. But this is how awesome he is. He's left you with the power to say, I don't want that. Matter of fact, I don't want you. See, the reason why people cannot deal with a God that they can't see is because they have been trapped in death, dealing exclusively with what they see. Yet what they see betrays them every time lets them down every time. That's why they get this saying, all good things must come to an end. That's not true. That is the biggest lie that was ever told to you. All good things must come to an end. See, it's that kind of mind you gotta fly like a frisbee. You gotta get rid of that. All good things must come to an end. Are you kidding me? Let me tell you what the Bible says. Eye is not seen nor ear heard, neither has it even entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them that love him, but he's revealed them unto us by his spirit. You know what that says? Your good thing, you haven't even discovered it yet. You so preoccupied with what's around you and what eludes you every day. That's why some people, they're, they're nice, they're... They're gentle, they're kind, but they are so angry. They never raise their voice. They never say anything, but they are so angry at the concept of God. And they're not bad people. There's no such thing as a bad person. There's no such thing as original sin. There's no, there's no such thing as that. What was original about you is good. 
I know a lot of you Christians, you have a problem with that because you say, no, we're sinners saved by grace. We're wretches undone. We're uh, without Jesus. We're nothing. And without Jesus. But you're not without Jesus. And if you're a sinner saved by grace, then you're stuck in the middle. Because once a sinner is saved by grace, he's not a sinner anymore. Even if he slips up and commits sin, he's not a sinner anymore. Simple. Simple. Believe in what is written. No, 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 no. I got an empty head. That's an empty headed people. Those are mindless people. Those are mindless people. You know, letting somebody put something in their head. No, you only get that way about God. If it supports something that you can see or that supports your flesh or supports uh, popular thinking, because a lot of you, you really don't know what you're doing. You're just moved by what is the most popular thing. If it did not originate from the concept of the God in the Bible, how do you know where you got it from? You telling me you using your own mind? Because you choose to believe something over the Bible. I got my own mind. I got my own mind. No, you didn't come here formulating any thought. And the concepts that you have, somebody put them in your head. As a matter of fact, some of you, you reject the Bible, even Christians. You reject some of the deeper claims of the Bible, like we have the mind of Christ. This is really basic stuff, but we are so seduced and drunk and and um, uh, intimidated by this politically correct society, who gives up fudge about being politically correct? Look at politics. Does any of us have confidence in politics? See, confused. Confused. Because deviating from simplicity and simple faith puts you in the maze of scientific surmisings, opinions of men, and you'll always feel like you're searching for something that God never <laughs> intended for you to be searching for. Do you realize that inquiry into spiritual things and mystery and darkness and secrecy surrounding spiritual things is as a result of the fall? See, you get away from a creationist worldview and yeah, okay. Evolution is real. And I know some of you would think I'm crazy, you know, and think I'm double minded saying this. No, listen to what I said. You get away from the simplicity of a creationist worldview. Evolution is real. And you'll be ever evolving. But your, uh, your philosophy doesn't make sense. Because somewhere you're going to have to admit that you have leveled off into something because you're not still evolving as a man. And see, the beautiful thing about the scripture is it doesn't change. And it speaks of a God who doesn't change. Well, you don't have to spend all your life trying to find it. And I'm telling you, sinner and saint alike are trapped in that mindset. Listen. God is in you. God is more in you than he is in anything that you think is God. Now, those of you who say you don't believe in God, that's why you're getting tricked. You're getting cheated because you were put here to be God. Oh, I can turn the whole world against me with that. Yeah, I, I know some people say, oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah, but see, you're screwed up in your thinking because you like that. But you see yourself as preeminent and you know you ain't. You can't grow a tooth back in your mouth. If you get a common cold, you got to go buy something to get it out. And so you grabbing the concept, yeah, I'm God, I'm God, I'm God. Yeah, but where do you come from? If you got kids, that's like your kid saying, I'm me and I'm me alone. And you know you spit that little monkey out. simple getting back to these oppositions of science 
Science agrees with God. Man has taken science and those of us who, those scientists who are, are, are earnest and honest and are who are enlightened and form, they, they can see that everything in science testifies of a higher power, an intelligent person, person, an intimate person, nothing spooky and evolving and big boom characteristic uh, has characteristics of a big boom and in person could not have intricately and intimately created this. Come on, give me a break. The beauty of the sun, mountains, trees, stars, water. Some of you running around uh, despising a creator and you enjoy the intimacy and the love. Somebody made that ocean because they knew how you would feel about it. Somebody made grass to... You can wiggle your toes in, and you can lay in and roll in. Somebody made that because they know how you would feel about it. It's simple. It's very simple. When you get away from the simplicity, now you got to deal with things outside of you that'll keep you confused and keep your life complicated. And look, here's another simple way of looking at it. This is very simple. Watch this. If men can keep you looking for evidence of things that, that are true and real about God and any other phenomena, if men can keep you looking outside of yourself, they will control you until you die. Because they will always be able to pose in front of you that they have something that you need. And it's, it's not as simple as you think. And uh, there are a few provisos. And it's, it's the same way attorneys work. It's the same way credit card applications work. It's the same way clauses work in everything that seeks to control your thinking, your money, your potential, your life. It's the way mortgages work. You know how the papers are when you're filling out a mortgage and they give you about three days to rescind or something like that. And you don't understand everything you're reading. Not everybody. You may all oh, I understand it. Whoa, big bully for you. That's one of another problem we deal with. It works for me. You're selfish. And do you realize that when you allow the complications of science with, with these men are dealing with, it's not really science. Science is in you. Science is not an external thing. See, you got to get your dome put on straight. You're walking around here feeling crazy because you're a Christian. And, crazy. and I'm telling you, you're getting away from the simplicity of that Bible. You get away. That Bible is not complicated. There are men here given the gift to go in there and show you something and then leave you. Nobody's supposed to be controlling you all your life like a lot of these preachers doing, taking tithes from people and all of that. You know, uh, and some of these people who say they don't believe in God, when they see someone like me or you talking about God, they lump you in with everything. So it's up to you to know what you're doing, to understand what you're doing, and to not be preoccupied with external things. Because that's what they're stumbling over. And if you're an external person and you don't have the internals exercised and settled and you sharpened, then you're expressing a form of godliness to them that denies power. And the essence of the gospel is Christ is in you. See, this is why people have a problem with Jesus. I'm going to tell you. It's why people have a problem with Christianity. I'll tell you. Because there are not living vessels that express, I'm talking about human beings that express the truth that if you want to see God, look at me.